Aloha and welcome to the classification of living things video. In this video we'll explain the two word name of species and we'll also describe the kinds of organisms that belong to each of the three domains. Okay, when we start talking about classification of species, what we're talking about is the science called taxonomy. And taxonomy was started by this individual down here, Carolus van Linnaeus. And he was a Swedish scientist who took it upon himself to try and name all of the known species at the time. So what he did is he would collect specimens and then he would name them. And as he was naming them, he decided to go with what we have now, this two-word naming system or binomial nomenclature. So every organism has a scientific name and it's generally going to be in Latin or Greek and the reason we chose Latin is because Latin doesn't change it's a dead language so because of that once its name is there it has a meaning that meaning's not going to shift or change over time now we say it's a binomial that means it's two names the first name that we generally see is going to be the genus and then the second one is going to be the species now species as we know is an individual Okay, so this one here is what makes it distinct. Genus can give us a hint of relationship. What is it related to? What is it closely related to? So the genus is generally a noun. It's going to be capitalized, and then it's either going to be underlined or italicized, depending on whether it's written or typed. And then the species name is going to be somewhat more descriptive, and it's going to be in lower case. Okay? So when we look at our scientific names, what we notice is we have two names. The first one is going to be capitalized, okay, and that's its genus. And you can have multiple species in the same genus. It's kind of like a last name. You can have various individuals with the same last name, but they'll have a different first name. In this case, we put that one first. That's the genus. And then our species tells us which individual species it is. Now, currently, we understand that we have three domains of living things. Um, and I want to just quickly go through those with you. We'll start exploring these topics a little bit more for the next couple of weeks. But our three domains, we have first the archaeobacteria. And the archaeobacteria are probably the ones that most represent what life was like when it first started on the planet. These ones live in harsh environments, and we'll talk more about them in a little bit. But those are our first ones. Now closely related to the archaeobacteria are the bacteria, and we'll talk about those as well. And both of these are going to be single-celled organisms. They don't have any special structures inside, no nucleus inside. It's just kind of like a sack of living goo. And then we get into the eukarya, and that's what we are. And those are where we see multicellular. We start seeing the organelles in the cells and things of that nature. So we do have our three domains that we want to see. Okay, so that's it for this video. As always, the lessons will go into a little bit more detail. Good luck with the lessons, and as always, we'll see you at the next video. Aloha, and welcome to our video on the prokaryotes. In this video, we'll look at the archaeobacteria and the eubacteria. So to begin, we're going to look at the archaeobacteria. Archae means kind of like ancient, so we're looking at the older bacteria. These guys here are prokaryotes, and what that means is basically they have one membrane, and then everything's going to be tucked inside of that one membrane. So it's kind of like a cell, and everything's just kind of in there and mixing together and such like that. It's not separated out. We'll learn a little bit more about that when we get into the eukaryotic cells. Now, the archaeobacteria kind of represent what we think life was like when it first originated on the planet. These guys like to live in extreme environments. We have what we call our thermoacidophiles. These guys like the extreme heat and the extreme acidity. We also have halophiles, which are very salty areas, high concentrations of salt water. And then we'll have the methanogens here, which will convert carbon dioxide into methane. So three totally bizarre kinds of bacteria in the sense that they don't do what we normally expect of them and they live in these really harsh kind of what we thought the earth was like when it was just forming so the archaeobacteria we think is the closest relation to or living remnant of what life started as on our planet now the eubacteria or the true bacteria these guys are also prokaryotic cells so what that means is that they have this outer membrane and a cell membrane but they don't have any organelles inside of the cell so the dna is just kind of there and just kind of hangs out um, with the eubacteria this is the bacteria that we're most familiar with 
And what we'll notice is that it gets its name based on its shape. So our big three ones here are going to be the bacillus, and the bacillus are kind of these rod-shaped cells, and that's like kind of the one that we see over here. We have the cosi or the cosix, and that one's going to be these circles, and we can have two of them like a diplococcus, a bunch of them in the chain like a streptococcus, and then they can be all knotted up like staphylococcus. So we can see that it's all these circular shapes. And then the last one is the spirillum down here, and that's going to be kind of spirally shaped there. So. Our U bacteria are prokaryotic, so they do have that one membrane that separates them, so it's kind of like a filled water balloon full of gunk, and then they get their names based on these shapes. And in the lessons, what they're gonna do is they'll go over a couple more specific examples so you can kind of see some of those guys like E. coli and things of that. So that's it for our video. Um, good luck with the lessons. Like I said, they'll go into a little bit more detail. And as always, we'll see you in the next video. Aloha and welcome to our video on the Kingdom Protista. In this video, we'll talk about the protozoans, we'll talk a little bit about algae, and we'll end up with a discussion on slime molds. Okay, so in this kingdom, we are now in the eukaryote. So we have eukaryotic cells, which means that we have a nucleus and we have internal structures called organelles. So the first group that we're going to talk about are the protozoans. And proto kind of means like or origin or original or precursor and zoa kind of refers to animal so these are going to be our animal-like protists and our animal-like protists generally tend to be grouped by how they move around um, we have three different groups we have the ciliates the amoebas and the flagellas the ciliates are like this one up here the paramecium you can see it and the cilia are these tiny little hairs that stick off the end of the cell here like this. And they can beat those kind of like a whole bunch of oars on a boat. They can kind of move around that way. Um, the amoebas are like our amoeba down here. They have these things called pseudopods. So they kind of extend out. And then they'll kind of fill into that little pseudopod. And that's kind of how they move around. So it's kind of like a squishy kind of movement that way. And then finally we have our flagellates, which have this flagella here, a tail. And these are like our euglena. So our protozoans tend to feed on other things. So they tend to be heterotrophic and they move around and how they move around is kind of how we classify the protozoans. Now the protists are a diverse group. We started with the protozoans, which were animal-like. We also have some that are gonna be plant-like and these are our algaes. okay? Perhaps some of the best known ones are the brown algaes, like the kelp over here. Okay, which can be rather large. We also have some green algaes, and the green algaes are where we start seeing some of this photosynthesis. They tend to be fresh water. We also have the blue-green algae that you'll see as well, and then some red algae as well. So a whole bunch of different ones, and these are plant-like. They use these pigments. They go through the process of photosynthesis. They get their energy that way. We also see our diatoms and our dinoflagellates, okay, which are also gonna be somewhat plant-like in nature. So even though they don't look a lot like plants, they all have the ability to photosynthesize or generate their own food, they're autotrophic. Okay, the last group of the protists that we wanna talk about are the slime molds. Um, the slime molds are kinda of neat because they have a duality of life cycles. So we'll start off here. Meiosis has just happened and we end up into a haploid stage where we form our spores. Our spores are going to germinate. When they do so, they'll form into either an amoeboid cell or a flagellated cell. And then these cells will eventually get back together through a process of syngamia and form a zygote. We return to our diploid stage. When we have our zygote, it undergoes mitosis and becomes this big feeding plasmodium. And this is where they get their name slime molds because they're kind of a slimy looking moldy looking thing here. The mature plasmodium, when it feeds and grows, will come this way. And it says it prepares to fruit and what we're talking about is forming this sporangin and then that's here where we'll undergo meiosis form more spores here in the process and the cycle continues itself okay so that's it for this video i just wanted to introduce you to some of the protists real quick the lessons will go into a lot more detail and as always we'll see you in the next video aloha and welcome to our video on fungi here we'll describe what a fungi is and show you some anatomy of them and then also we'll talk a little bit about lichens. Okay, within the kingdom, fungi is where we find our fungus and our various different organisms that make up this kingdom. 
These would be like our mushrooms, which we see here. Yeast is well, another example. Mold is another example. So we have a bunch of different organisms that fall into this kingdom. Now, these guys may get confused for plants periodically, but they're not autotrophic. They're heterotrophic, which means that they have to go out and find their energy. They consume something. That's how they get their energy and their nutrients. They don't manufacture their own like a plant does. With the kingdom fungi, they generally fill the role as a decomposer. So they'll find dead and rotting things, and they'll return those nutrients to the soil, and that'll allow plants to grow. So they fulfill a vital role in the ecosystem. Now, if you look at our picture, you'll notice we have two different parts. We have this fruiting body, and then we have the mycelium here. And this is generally going to be like where the ground cover is. So if we take a look at the picture down here, and you see all of these different mushrooms here poking up here, what we notice is that underground, they're all going to be connected to the mycelium. So while it looks like there's a bunch of different organisms here, that's probably one large organism. It just has several fruiting bodies that are showing. Now the fruiting body is where they produce spores, and those spores are going to be released out, and that's how they grow and spread their populations over areas. Now, as I mentioned, they start off with this mycelium down here, and that's under what we don't see, and that generally spreads out, and that's how they move around. So that's how one organism is going to grow. One of the interesting things is when they get like a bread mold gets into a loaf of bread, this mycelium might spread throughout the entire bread, even though you only see a little bit of the mold on the surface, and that's going to be its fruiting body showing and getting ready to reproduce. So as you can tell, the fungi is this diverse group, and the lesson will go into it a little bit more, but I just wanted to give you a quick run through and a quick introduction of them. Now, the last group that we're going to talk about real quickly is the lichens. And the lichens are kind of an interesting organism. They're categorized as an organism, but they're really made up of three different things. Um, they have a fungal part to them here, which provides support. So if we look here, we'll see where the fungus is going to be here, and that's going to provide support, anchoring, things of that nature. They are also going to have an algae component, which we can kind of see in through here. And this is where they can do some photosynthesizing. That's where they can make their own food that way. And then finally, there is a bacterial component which gives them the nitrogen they need to live. So lichens generally tend to be the first organism into a unexplored or unexploited ecosystem. Like if you had a brand new island pop out of the ocean, the lichens, when they get there, those are ones that can survive because they have all these three parts that work together and allow them to live. And we can see them, they kind of be close to the rocks and live this way as well. Okay, so that's it for our discussion. Um, we will wish you luck on the lessons as always, and we'll see you in the next video.